Hey guys. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Hey guys, I know. Welcome back to Musical Teacher, and today we're we'll going to be reading The Sign of the Fall. So we we'll want to be uh, reading to chapter 1, and hope you enjoyed it. My bad for uh, saying hello, hello, because uh, I don't know when, it, when this is working. So, yep. Yeah. Chapter 1, The Signs of Deduction Sherlock Holmes took his bow from the corner of the mountainpiece and his hypodemic syringe from his neat Morocco case with his long white fingers white nervous fingers he adjusted the delicate needle, needle and rolled black his left shirt cuff for some little time. His eyes rested thoughtfully upon the three, three newly forearm and wrist, all dotted and scarred with innumerable puncture marks. Finally, he thrust the sharp point home, pressed down the tiny piston and sank back into the velvet-lined armchair with a long sign of satisfaction. Three times a day for many months I had witnessed this performance, but customs, custom had not reconciled my mind to it. On the contrary, from day to day, I had become more irritable at the sight, and the con consonants swelled nightly within me at the thought that I had lacked the courage to protest again and again, I had registered a vow that I should deliver my soul upon the subject. But there was that in the cool, nonchalant air of my companion which made me the last man with his masterly manner and experience which I had of his many extraordinary qualities, all made me different and backward in crossing him. Yet upon that afternoon, whether it was a bone which I had taken with my lunch or additional expirations produced by extreme deliberation of his manner, I suddenly felt that I could hold out no longer. Which is today? I asked. I asked. Morphine or cocaine? He realised, he raised his eyes lingeringly from the black, old black letter volume he had opened. It is cocaine, he said. A 7% solution. Would, would you like to care to try some? No, indeed, I answered br brusquely. My constitution has not got over the Afghan campaign yet. I cannot afford to throw any extra strain upon it. He smiled at my vehemence. Perhaps you're right, Watson, he said. I suppose its influence it's f is a physically bad one. I find it, however, so transcurrently simultaneously and clarifying to the mind that its second action is a matter of small moment. But consider, I said earnestly, count the cost. Your brain might me. May as well you say be roused and excited, but it's a pathological morbid process which involves increased tissue change and may at last leave a permanent weakness, you know. To what a black reaction comes upon you? Surely the game is hardly worth the candle. Why should you, for a mere passing pleasure, this gloss? of those great powers which, with which you have been endowed. Remember that I speak not only as a one comrade to another, but as a medical man, to one of whose constitution he is to some extent answerable. 
He did not seem offended. On the contrary, he put his fingers, fingertips together and leaned his elbows on the arms of his chair, like one who relished for conversation. My mind, he said, rebels like stagnation. Give me problems. Give me work. Give me the most abstruse cryptogram or the most intricate analyst. And I am in my own proper atmosphere. I can dispense then with artificial stimulants. But I... I adore the dull routine of existence. I crave for mental acceleration. This is why I have chosen my own particular profession, or rather created it, for I am the only one in the world. The only official detective, I said raising my eyebrows, the only official de consulting detective, he answered. I am the last in the highest court of appeal and detection, when Gre Gregson and or Lestrie or Anthony Jones are cut out, cut out of the depths, which by the way is their normal state. The matter is laid before me. I examine the data as an expert and pronounce a specialist opinion. I claim no credit in such cases. My name is my fi my name figures in no newspaper. The work itself, the pleasure of finding a field of my particular powers, is my highest reward. But you have yourself had some experience of my methods of work in the Jefferson Hope case. Yes, indeed," said I said quarterly. I was never struck by anything in my life. I've never em embodied it in a small brush with some half fantastic title of A Study in Scarlet. He shook his head sad sadly. I glanced over it, he said. Honestly, I cannot congratulate you upon it. Detection is ought to be an exact science and should be treated in the same code and motional matter. You have attempted to to tinge it with romanticism, which, which produces much the same effect as if you worked a love story or a implement into the fifth proposition of Isolate. But the romance was there, I re remonstrate. I could not temper with the fact some facts should be suppressed, or at least a just sense of proportion should be observed in treating them. The only point in the case which deserved deserved mention was a curious antelic reason for effects to cause by which I succeeded in unraveling it. I was annoyed at this criticism of a work which had been specially designed to please him. I confess, too, that I was irritated by the egotism which seemed to demand that every line of pamphlet should be devoted to his own special doings. More than once during the years that I had lived with him in Baker Street, I had observed that that of small fanjari only in my companion's quiet and delicate manner i i made no remark however but sat nursing my wounded leg i did a jizzle bullet through it some time before and had not fed me from walking it ached wearily at every change of the weather my patient has extended recently to the continent said Jones after a while filling up his ward brier root pipe I was consulted last week by Francis Lee Villard, who, as you probably know, has come rather to the front lately in the French detective service. He has all the clouted power of quick in intuition, but he is a deficient in the wide range of exact knowledge, which is essential to the high developments of his art. The case was concealed with a whale and possessed some features of interest. I was able to refer him to two parallel cases. The one at Raga, features of interest in 1857 and other at St. Louis in 1871, 
which I have suggested to him the true solution. Here is a letter which I had this morning, acknowledging my assistance. He tossed over it as he spoke a crumpled sheet of new papers. I glanced my eyes down at it, catching a profusion of notes at, of admiration of Shrey. Magnificus caught the mysteries or and tore the force, all testifying to the ardent administration administration of the Frenchman. He speaks as a pupil to his master, I said. Oh, he he rates my assistance too highly, said Sherlock lightly. He has con considerable gifts himself. He possesses two of the three qualities necessary for the Adu detective. His power of observation, that of detection. He is only wanting in knowledge that I may come in time. He is now translating my small works into French. Your work? Oh, didn't you know? He cried. <laughs> yes, I've, I've, I have been guilty for several monographs. They've all been technical subjects. Here, for an example, he is brought upon the distinction between ashes of versus tobaccos. In it, I end a uh, meat. A hundred of forty forms of cigar, cigarette, and pipe tobacco, with colour plates illustrating the difference in the ash. It is a point which, continually turning up in a criminal trace, and is sometimes of supreme importance as a clue. If you say definitely, for example, that some murder has been done by a man who was smoking an Indian linger. It it obviously narrows your field of search. To the trained eye, this is this is as much difference between the black ash of a trichinopoly and the white fluff of bird's eye, as there is between a cabbage and a potato. You have extraordinary genius for a minute, I remarked. Yeah, I appreciate their importance. Here is my monograph upon the tracing of footsteps, with some remarks upon the ushers, uses of plasters of Paris as a preserver of impresses. Here, too, is a curious set of work upon the influence of a trade. Upon it. Upon the form on the hand, with Lethal types of the hands of slaters, sailors, cock, cock cutters, com composituous, weavers, and diamond polishers. That is a matter of great pract practical interest to the scientific detective, especially in the cases unclaimed bodies or in discovering the antecedents of criminals. But I weary you with my hobby. Not at all, I answered earnestly. It is it of the great interest to me, especially since I have had the opportunity of observing your particular application of it? But you just spoke now of observation and detection. Surely the one to some extent implies other. Why, hardly, he answered, leaning back lustfully in his armchair and sending up thick blue wreaths of his pipe. For example, observation shows me that you have been to Wigmore Street Post Office this morning, but deduction lets me know that when you when there you have you dispatched a telegram. Right, said I, right on both points, but I confess that I didn't see how you arrived at it. It was a sudden impulse upon my part, and I've in Mention it to no one. It is simplicity itself, he remarked, chuckling at my surprise. So ab absurdly simple that explanation is superfluous, and yet it may serve to define the limits of observation and of deduction. Observation tells me that you have a little 
reddish mound adhering to your inset. Just observe three more street office that they have taken up the pavement and thrown some earth which lies in such a way that it is difficult to fall treading in in, it, in entering. The earth is for this particular reddish tint, which is found as far as I know, nowhere else in the neighbourhood. So much is observation, the rest is deduction. How then did you deduce the telegram? Why, of course, I knew you, that you had not written a letter since I said opposite to you all morning. I see also in your open desk that there have been a sheet of stamps and thick bundle of postcards. What, what could you go into the post office for then but to send a wire? E element all other factors that the one which remains must be the truth. In this case, it certainly is so, I re In this case, it certainly is so, I replied after a little thought. The thing, however, is, as you say, of the simplest. Would you think me impenitent if I were to put your theories to a more severe test? On the contrary, he answered, it would prevent me from taking a second dose of cocaine. It should be del delighted to look at any problems you which you might submit to me. I have heard you say that it's difficult for a man to have any object in daily use without leaving the impress of individual individuality upon it in such a way that a true observer might read it. Now I have a, here a watch which has recently came into my possession, which you have the kindness to let me have opinion upon the character or the habits of the late owner. I handed it off. I handed over the watch with some slight feeling of amusement in my heart, for the test was, as I thought, an impossible one, and intended it as a lesson against somewhat dogmatic charm, which he occasionally assumed. He balanced the, wa balanced the watch in his hand, glazing hard at the door opened the back and examined the works, first with his naked eye, then a powerful context lens. I could hardly keep from smiling at his crestfallen face when he finally snapped the case to and handed it back. There are hardly any data, he remarked. The watch has recently cleaned, which rust robs me of most detective facts. You are right, I answered. It was claimed before being sent to me. In my heart, I accused my companion of doing forward a more slim and Im important accuse to cover his failure. What data could he expect from unclean watch? Though unsatisfactory, my research has not been entirely barren. He observed staring at the ceiling with dreamy, lacklustre. Eyes. Should subject to your correction, I should just judge that the watch belonged to your elder brother, who inher inherited it from your father. That, that you gather no doubt from the HR upon the back. Quite so. The H, the W, suggests your own name. The date at the watch is nearly fifty years back. Initials are as old as the watch. So it is made for last generation. Jewelry usually descends to the eldest son, and he's most likely to have some name as the father. Your father has, as if I remembered right, been dead many years as it was, therefore by the hands of your elder brother. Right so, right so far, and said I, anything else? He was a man of untidy habits, very untidy, and carelessness. Careless.
He left with good prospects, but he threw away chances. He did from time in poverty with occasional short interlunds of prosperity. And finally taking to drink, he died. That's all I gather. I sprang from my chair and limped impatiently round him with considerable bitterness in my heart. This is unworthy of you, Holmes, I said. I could not have believed that you would have descended this to this. You made inquiries into my history of my unhappy brother, and now you pretend to reduce his knowledge in some fanciful way. You cannot expect me to believe that you all read this from this old watch. It is unkind and to speak plainly has a touch of clarification in it. My dear doctor, he, he, said he kindly, pray accept my apologies, viewing the matter as an abstract problem. I have forgotten how personal and painful a thing it might be to you. I assure you, however, that I never knew that you had a brother until you handed me the watch. Then how in the name of all this is a wonderful did you get these facts? They're absolutely correct in any particular. Every particular. Ah, that is good luck. I could only say what was balance of probability. I did not at all expect to be so accurate. But it was not mere guesswork. No, no, I never guess. It's a shocking habit, destructive to logical fact, factually. Which seems strange to you is only so because you did not follow my tray. Of thought, of, of observed the small facts upon, upon which large inference may depend. For example, I began by stating that your brother was careless. When you observe the low part of the watch case, you notice that it is not only dented in two places, but is cut and marked all over from the habit of keeping other hard objects, such as coins or keys, in the same pocket. Surely it is not great feat to assume that a man who treats a fifty guinea watch so cleverly must be careless man. Neither is it is a very far fetched inference that a man who in inherited what article of such value is pretty well provided for in other respects. I nodded to show that I followed his reasonings. It is very customary of four pawnbrokers and England, when they take a watch to scratch the number of the ticket with a pinpoint upon the inside of the case. It is more handy than a label, as there is no risk of number being lost or transposed. There are no less than four such numbers visible to my lens on the inside of the ca- of this case. Influence that your brother was often al- at low water. Sudden influence that he had occasional bursts of prosperity, or he could not have redeemed the pledge. Finally, I ask you to look at the inner plate, which con- holds the keyhole. Look at the thousands of tr- scratches all round the hole, marks where the key has slipped. What Superman's key could have s- scored those grooves? But you will never see a drunk heart watch without them. He winds it at night and leaves those traces of an unsteady hand. Where is the mystery in all this? It is clearer, it is clear as daylight, I answered. I regret the injustice which I did you. I should have had more fear in my marvellous faculty. May I ask whether you have any professional inquiry on a foot at present? None, hence the cocaine. I cannot live without brain work. What else is there to live for? Sitting at the window here was such a dreary, dismal, and profitable world. So far the yellow folk swirls down the street and drifts across the down coloured houses. What well, could be more hopelessly proscurate and material? material. What well, is the use of having powers, Doctor, when one has no fear upon which to exert them? 
Crime is commonplace. Existence is commonplace. No qualities which save those who are commonplace have any function upon it. earth. I'd open my mouth to reply his try it when a crisp knock knock our lady entered, bearing a card upon the brief silver. A young lady for you, sir, she had addressing my companion. Miss Mary Mawson, he read. Hmm, I'd no rec- recollection of the name. I asked long I asked the young lady to step up. Miss Huston Don't go, doctor. I should prefer that you remain. So, chapter one, the signs of deduction. So, Colin Doyle uses each character in the novel to move the plot on. He maintains peace and focus on solving crime. There are, there are monetary distractions as Watson falls in love with Mary Mawson. He deliberately chooses the named, named chapters so that the reader can understand the key idea in each one. The first chapter presents Holmes' character his methods of detecting crime. Then he demonstrates his skills of deduction. So, let us set the scene. We're in the house at 221 Baker Street, where Holmes and Watson lives. The way, the way the story is presented to the reader, Dr. Watson is the narrator of this story. He lives with Sherlock Holmes at 21B Baker Street, he is a loyal friend and admirer of Holmes. Exceptional skills, he refers to a small brochure with some fantastic title of studying Scarlet that he has already written in a previous case. This is a reference to the first Sherlock novel, A Studying Scarlet, which was published in 1887. Sherlock Holmes disproves of Watson's version of the case, detection is art, or ought to be an exact science and should be treated in the same code and martial ma- matter. We have attempted to change it with romanticism, but the romantis- romance was there, I had re- repensated. I could not temper with the facts. The only point in the case which deserves to mention that was the curious analytical reasons of from effects to causes, but which I stayed in unraveling it. So, what does Holmes' reaction reveal about his character? This conversation gives the reader a flavour of the relationship between the two central characters. So, there is a theme of romance versus science in is presented in this character. It emphasises the contrast between Holmes. So, Holmes already challenged Dr. Watson's account of his infect- investigation in a study in Scarlet. He said it was too romantic and not enough scientific analysts. And Holmes' brilliant deduction about Watson's hope offended him when he told a sad story of his brother's life. Holmes reacts by saying I had forgotten about how personal and painful a thing it might be for you. So, the opening to the novel, how is Sherlock Holmes introduced in this character, chapter even? Why was Gordon Doyle chosen to open the novel with Sherlock Holmes acting in such a way? So, what do we understand about his character from the following quotations? So, Sherlock Holmes took his ball from the corner of the mantelpiece. And this hypodemic syringe from his neat microcase with his long white finger. So here's a quote in my mind. He said, Rebels are stagnation. Give me problems, give me work, give me the most absolute kit- kitchen or the most intricate analyst. And I'm in my own proper atmosphere. I can dispense that any artificial stump. Simulants, but I entered no routine of existence, a grave for mental acceleration. And some more. 
Trouble Sense is two key ideas about Detective Work. He compliments a young detective who he I recently worked with he. And this quote did here. Animate all factors in one which means must be the truth. And here's some links for you to demonstrate the skills of deduction. So, by practicing P or SQI, you must write a sentence to describe Sherlock Holmes as he reveals in this quotation. But oh, in evidence, my bell, my mind rebels at stagnation. Give me work, give me problems. And then, here's some questions to think about. So, why has Obfrunda created? This, this character in this way. How does this drive Holmes' actions and what does he, it, or what makes him engaging for the readers? And that will call it a day for English. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and thank you for watching.